So recently, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have expressed their shock at the response they have received regarding their claims of a car chase. According to a new report, the couple insists that their account of the harrowing incident was not exaggerated, and they find the criticism hurtful and unjust. In the face of backlash, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are determined not to remain silent. Despite the negative reactions, they are resolute in their decision to speak out and stand up for themselves when they feel wronged. Dispelling any notions of hiding from public view, the couple remains steadfast in their commitment to address the issue. Their spokesperson also addressed the speculation surrounding the incident, dismissing any suggestion that it was exaggerated for publicity purposes. In a statement to Page Six, publicist Ashley Hansen emphasized the significance of Prince Harry's family history, referencing the tragic car crash that claimed the life of Princess Diana in 1997. Hansen deemed any insinuation of a PR stunt as abhorrent, emphasizing the couple's genuine concerns. According to Harry and Meghan, the car chase unfolded as they were returning from the Ms. Foundation's Women of Vision Awards, held at the illustrious Ziegfeld Ballroom in New York City. The couple, accompanied by Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, faced what they described as a near-catastrophic pursuit by paparazzi that lasted for two hours. The number of photographers reportedly dwindled from 12 to 4 as the couple's security team made efforts to evade them. This incident inevitably drew comparisons to the tragic events that led to the death of Princess Diana. Harry, who was only 12 years old at the time, has been open about his deep-seated emotions regarding the paparazzi's intrusion into his family's life. He has expressed the enduring pain he experiences whenever he is confronted with cameras, clicks, and flashes, as they serve as constant reminders of his mother's untimely loss. New York City is renowned for being swathed in a web of cameras, including traffic cameras, surveillance cameras, and even cameras wielded by TikTok enthusiasts and local bodegas. In light of this reality, some skeptics find it hard to believe the car chase described by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle unfolded exactly as they recounted, especially without any third-party evidence to corroborate their claims. How is it possible to traverse the city without triggering a traffic camera ticket, yet embark on a two-hour chase through Midtown without a single camera capturing their movements? Critics suggest that the purported car chase was more of a leisurely paced affair rather than a high-speed pursuit, given the notorious traffic congestion that plagues downtown Manhattan. Some even speculate that the whole ordeal was engineered to attract additional attention. The New York Police Department, NYPD, however, offers a different perspective. While acknowledging the chaotic nature of the scene, the NYPD maintains that it was ultimately under control. In a statement to the New York Post, an NYPD spokesperson explained that the couple encountered numerous photographers that made their transportation challenging. Nevertheless, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination unscathed, with no reported incidents of collisions, summonses, injuries, or arrests. A spokesperson for Meghan and Harry counters this narrative, describing their involvement in a near-catastrophic car chase orchestrated by a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. According to the spokesperson, this relentless pursuit spanned over two hours and led to multiple close calls with other drivers, pedestrians, and even two NYPD officers. The spokesperson emphasizes that while public figures naturally attract public interest, this should never come at the expense of personal safety. Photo agency Backgrid USA has also weighed in on the incident asserting that their photographers had no intention of causing distress or harm, as their sole tool was their cameras. The company emphasizes its commitment to transparency and journalistic ethics, pledging to provide fair and factual responses to the claims made by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. On the other hand, taxi driver Sukhchar and Sunny Singh, who had the privilege of chauffeuring the couple to their destination, described the incident as pretty crazy but not frightening. Singh's account contrasts with the heightened anxiety portrayed by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. They were undoubtedly affected by the memories and echoes of the tragic fate that befell Harry's mother, Princess Diana. It seems that Harry and Meghan are either incredibly deluded, unable to perceive the truth even when confronted with it, or they are deliberately choosing to ignore reality and instead resort to more lies.
I am beginning to lean towards the former, as it appears that Meghan is willing to let Harry publicly ruin himself. They have now reached the seven-year mark in their relationship, commonly known as the seven-year itch. Additionally, they have just surpassed the milestone of five years of marriage and having two children, which a courtier predicted at the time of their wedding. My prediction is that we will likely hear about their separation no later than Christmas, possibly even as early as autumn. One aspect that both fascinates and frustrates me about the Harkles is their unwavering insistence that anyone who criticizes them must be motivated by jealousy, racism, sexism, or simply a lack of understanding. They continuously assert that we fail to comprehend their perspective and have misunderstood them entirely. If only they would share their side of the story for the umpteenth time, they believe we would finally come to our senses, recognizing them as the second coming of Princess Diana, and showering them with the adoration they believe they deserve. Yet, they cannot fathom that people have already been exposed to their narrative, have considered their words, and still harbor dislike towards them. It is as if their self-absorbed minds are incapable of processing this reality. The latest developments appear to be fueled by sheer fury. Their reaction goes beyond mere shock. They are absolutely livid. Who are we, the ordinary people, to dare reject them? In their minds, we should be bending over backward to impress them and gain their approval, rather than the other way around. I believe it's a combination of both factors. They double down on their beliefs and eventually start to believe their own fabrications. I have encountered individuals like Megan in my own life, and they genuinely convince themselves of their own lies. They are addicted to playing the victim, twisting every situation to cast themselves as the pitiable party. Megan craves adoration and sympathy from everyone. She may have orchestrated the entire spectacle, yet she truly believes in the authenticity of her near-death experience. It turns my stomach inside out. The most important details in this text are that Harry and Meghan's mental health concerns are linked to delusion, and that Diana had deep-rooted troubles and harbored a vengeful disposition from her early years. Harry has elevated his mother to a position of reverence, and Meghan has asserted that a picture of Diana adorned the delivery room during Meghan's purported childbirth of Archie. This is a disconcerting reflection of their precarious mental state, as both individuals aim to propagate this narrative to the world. It is important to acknowledge that Diana had deep-rooted troubles and harbored a vengeful disposition from her early years, and that her sons had the presence of Alexandra Pettifer, formerly known as Tiggy Leg Burke, whom they held in great affection. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video entertaining, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more royal staffs in the future. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to seeing you all at the next one.